Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be doing another trying new makeup. I picked up the Kosas foundation as well as the one size a beauty blur balm, which is essentially a BB cream or foundation. I asked you guys on community and also Instagram which you wanted to see first. You guys said the Kosas, and most of you guys said that you just wanted to see it put in a first impressions video. I bought this the day it launched, but by the time I get things, you know, through shipping, sometimes I just can't get videos out as quickly as I would like to. So today I want to focus in on the new Kosas foundation as well as this ColourPop Rock candy palette and this palette is quite cool but I feel like this is the most exciting eyeshadow palette I have right now that I wanted to test out. Now in terms of the Patrick Ta, I have the new blush shade and this is in She's Blushing as well as his plumping lip gloss in this bright color called Full Syringe. I also have a couple new products from Makeup by Mario which is the new Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Creams and I also have a couple of the new I Need a Rose lipsticks from Natasha Denona and then I also have have the Refer Hydration Cream. This is their first kind of skincare product, as well as this Makeup Revolution Under Eye Primer. This is supposed to be like a line fixer. And then I have the YSL Lash Clash. And then I may use some other products I'm still trying to get my full thoughts on. So I will link all the products down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. And if you enjoy these first impression videos, give this video a huge thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. And let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so we're gonna start out on an eye look with this new ColourPop Rock Candy Palette. This is giving me sort of the Stone Fox palette, but with a little bit more of a mauve touch to it. Everything in here is quite cool, so I don't know how I'm going to get this to work with the other products I have. Sometimes when I'm doing these trying new makeup videos, it's really hard to put a full face together. Right now we have a ton of lip products, we have blushes, we have foundations, concealers, but interestingly, we're kind of low on the eyeshadow palettes, stuff like that, like bronzers, there's really nothing new. I think I'm gonna start off with this shade right here, which seems to be a sort of like matte with glitter in it. ColourPop just seems to release so much product that I just truly cannot keep up. I really prefer when brands you know, if they're gonna release new collections or new products, that it's not the same thing. Like, I just get a little overwhelmed with all the eyeshadow palettes. I went ahead and zoomed you in a little bit more. I'm trying to figure out what zoom is the best because I want you guys to be able to see the eyeshadow, but I also feel like sometimes I'm a little too close. Also, I have a huge blemish that really was nothing, and, you know, me being me, I picked at it and made it into something it's painful too, so I'm like, good job on that one. So I just switched brushes and I'm just sort of blending out the edges of this, but this is definitely a matte with some glitter in it, which is not my favorite. Okay, so to add a little bit of warmth, I'm going into this shade, although it's still pretty cool. I saw the promo photos and these looked a little bit more warm online, but all these shades are quite cool. This is like almost a peachy, flesh tone. So to deepen this up, I'm gonna jump into this dark shade down here. We also have a wind advisory right now. So if it sounds like uh, my house is about to blow over, it's one of those windy days. So I'm just gonna put this in a halo placement. And then I'm gonna go on with this shade right up here and I'm going to use the first brush still quite deep, but I'm just going to use this to blend those edges. So just to blend everything out, I'm going to mix these two shades right here, and I just want to blend above where I uh, did all that halo work. I just want to make sure that this is soft. So it's just very subtle, but using like this light mixture just soften any choppiness so for the lid this shade is calling my name it almost has a shift i'm almost thinking of using this and then possibly this shade like in the center that's very cool toned though that's my problem is i'm like drawn to 
these, actually, okay, I'm gonna start with this shade right here. So I'm just taking this dry and I'm gonna put it on each side of the center of my eye. So I wanna do this like softly. I don't want it to be like crazy pigmented, but the center shade, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do. Ooh, that, let's do that. I'm gonna do this shade right here just because I don't wanna take it too cool toned. So I'm gonna stick with that one and I'm gonna put that right in the center. So this shade is dry. I might wet this one. Actually, I'm gonna use my finger and let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna use my finger here. I did wet my brush now because I really wanna enhance just like right in the center. And then just on the sides, I'm going back in with that first shimmery shade that we used. So I almost always end up doing a wing, but today I'm gonna try not to. I'm gonna take my KBD Tattoo Liner. I'm just gonna do a thin line across my eye, and then I'm gonna smudge the edges with shadow just because I want a base for my lashes. I tend to enjoy just having some sort of liner on the top lash line. I feel like my lashes always just look better. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a thin line. So now that I did a little bit of a line, I am gonna go in to the palette. I'm gonna mix these two shades. So that deep shade we use, but also the black. And I'm going to smoke out the outer edge of this. So using a really small brush, Okay, so I went ahead and smudged the liner out. I wanna go in with this new mascara. I just have a mini sample size that I added to a Sephora order. This is the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. This is supposed to be smudge proof and also super volumizing. It has a really large wand. Sometimes when I use these samples, they don't end up giving me the same result as the full size, but it's a nice way to try the formula out. Okay, so this feels like barely anything's coming off. So definitely more of a dry formula, at least this sample. So here's about two coats. It's definitely a drier formula. You can definitely build it up. I like it so far. It's hard to tell when I have a bunch of eyeshadow on just because I typically, you know, I wear lashes when I do like liner and a lot of eyeshadow. Oh, I just got it up there. I hate how I do that. So this is about two coats on each side. I have to say I like it. I don't know if I'm like, woo, blown away, but I actually do feel like it plumped my lashes up because I have very sparse, small lashes. So I'd be interested to keep trying this, but I am gonna throw on some falsies. These are from Pound Lashes UK. They're so affordable, like $2, $3, and they're all foam ink. And this is in the style uh, 5D Russian foam ink. These are pretty intense, but I'm just feeling like it because lately I've been doing quite a bit of just like the corner lash. And today I just wanna go completely there. So these are like really fluffy. These lashes are such nice quality and I'm telling you they're so affordable. I, th I literally think they're like three pounds or three dollars. So I just made a huge order a while ago and I just have like so many lashes to choose from. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on and then we're gonna move on to the face. Okay, lashes are on. These are some big <laughs> lashes. I haven't worn lashes this big in a while, but I kind of love it. So now I wanna go in and start on the face. I'm gonna be using the Refer. This is the hydration cream. So mine looks used and abused because I actually took this with me on vacation. I didn't actually take this, but I took some of this out into like a travel size and I used it on vacation. So this is interesting because it's fragrance free, essential oil free, good for all skin types, and it has niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, dimethicone, so it's supposed to be just a basic hydrator, and this is what it looks like. And I would say it's not the most hydrating, but it has almost like that cream slash gel type of feel. I can definitely feel a little bit of that smoothing dimethicone in there. I would say a little bit more hydrating than a gel, but it's not like a thick cream. So I feel like if you have combo skin, like me, you probably would enjoy it. It's not matte at all, but I think because it does have a little bit of that dimethicone in there, just gives you a little bit 
of that soft, silky feel. I'm gonna go in next with my airbrush primer, the Vanish one from Hourglass. I've just been really enjoying this, and I use this in my T-zone for smoothing. It also has a little bit of shine control. That zit right there is just, she's there, honey. She's not even paying her rent. She's like moved in. I'm like, excuse me. Such a weird spot for me personally to get a huge blemish, but it's my own fault because I picked at it. I knew I shouldn't have. Okay, so I'm super excited to try this. You guys have been asking me to try this and I just had to wait for my shipment to come. This is the new Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation with SPF 25. I'm a little nervous to try this only because anything that's like super hydrating typically doesn't, you know, last on my skin. So this is supposed to be medium coverage, hydrating with a natural finish, SPF 25. So it's supposed to improve your skin as you wear it. It has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, squalane, peptides, a lot of things in it. So I picked up the shade Medium Neutral 220. It's supposed to be medium with neutral cool undertones. I think it's probably going to be a little dark, but I have to say I'm having the hardest time getting the right shade match. The uh, packaging is really cute. matches the concealer and it has a pump and I think you do get one ounce. Yeah, you get one ounce. So I pump some out. You can see it's a little bit more liquidy. I'm gonna go in with a brush on one side. This shade looks a little dark for me, which ooh, I really didn't know. Ooh, it has a scent to it. It smells like the concealer, almost like, what is the smell I'm thinking of? Like bees, beeswax or something. Okay, so this is supposed to be neutral cool. I don't know if it's looking cool to me. Feels uh, definitely like there's skincare in here, which worries me just because really anything with like skincare in it tends to just be a little bit heavy and texture enhancing on me. Okay, I wanna see how it covers that huge blemish of mine. So I feel like it did an okay job. I might have to put a little concealer just because that uh, zit is angry, but I feel like it looks really nice and glowy. I do wanna see how it sets down with powder. So I'm gonna go in on the other side with my beauty sponge, just to see if I prefer one or the other. The shade is definitely a little bit dark. I mean, it's when I have like a fresh tan. So this is what the Kosas Revealer Foundation looks like. I definitely think I need to get a lighter shade, so I will do that. I do feel like it's dewy, but it's not as thick and heavy as let's say like the LYS Beauty Foundation. That one was just so heavy. This is giving me a similar feel, but lighter, which I like. I do feel like my texture is enhanced because really anything that has like skincare in it typically is a little bit thicker, very emollient, very hydrating, and that enhances my texture. Setting my foundation always helps, but I just feel like I definitely have to because it does feel quite tacky and very skincare-like, but it blended beautifully. I would say it's a medium coverage. You're not gonna get more than medium, just trying to build that up, and I feel like it would become heavy just because it is so emollient with all those hydrating ingredients. So I wanna jump in and move on to concealer and then setting this, and I wanna see if I can make Make it work for me a little bit more because right now we're looking a little bit dark. So before I get into concealer, I have this new product from Revolution, Makeup Revolution. This is the Line Fix Under Eye Primer. So I've swatched this and it's really interesting. This is supposed to essentially erase your lines under your eyes. It comes out basically like a gel and it's clear and it feels very like silicone feeling, I guess. So I wanna try this under one eye and then on the other one, nothing to see if we can see a difference. Okay, so I got some out and I'm just gonna use it on this under eye. Right where I have all these lines, it feels Honestly, like a lighter whipped version of, let's say, the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. 
So I'm just applying a little bit. When I'm looking at, you know, my mirror right now, I can see that this looks a little bit more smooth. So I'm interested to see how concealer goes over this. For concealer, I'm still testing out this LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. And I thought it would play nicely with the Kosas. I have it in the shade MN1. This is more of a hydrating concealer. I like this concealer, it's very thin and I find it to be quite hydrating, but my only complaint is the packaging is difficult. When you try to, you know, put the doe foot in because it's bent, I feel like I'm gonna break it every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the side that we put that line smoothing primer. So everything seemed to blend normally. I don't have any weird patching. So let's go on this side with no primer. Okay, so looking at my under eyes, I'm not really seeing a huge difference. Maybe a little bit less creases on this side, but really nothing that I can tell. You guys have to let me know down below. All right, so I wanna go ahead and set my face. I'm hoping by using some powders that are a little bit lighter that we can calm down how dark this is. So I'm gonna be using my Huda Beauty Pound Cake in the center of my face. So this is the side that we put that line primer down. So I almost feel like I have a little mark there where I lost a little bit of coverage. We'll have to see on this side. Okay, that little spot right there is like driving me nuts. I'm not really sure how to remedy that. Okay, I'm not really sure how to fix that, but this definitely did something funky on this side, which I'm not loving. It's actually kind of driving me nuts, but I'm not really sure how to fix that because we just set everything. So I went ahead and applied my Fenty Beauty Bronzer. I don't have a new bronzer, but I wanna finish the eyes off and then we will use that Patrick Ta Blush Duo. So for the lower lash line, I'm gonna go into this shade down here and I'm just going to use this really tight against the lower lash line, trying to connect it to this outer edge. I'm taking a really small brush from Refer. Refer has really nice, like, tiny brushes for detail work that I really love. And then underneath that, I'm going to go into this shade right here, and I'm going to use another Refer. This is a 26. It's just a little bit of a larger pencil brush. And then from Melt Cosmetics, I have this new liner. I demoed it in another video I filmed. I don't know if that's been posted yet, but I'm gonna use this in my lower lash line. This is the Slick Waterline Eye Pencil. So my first impression on this was extremely pigmented and creamy, as you can see. I don't know about longevity. I didn't wear that makeup long enough, and I couldn't tell just like off of the first time wearing it but extremely creamy, like no tugging at all. Extremely pigmented too. And I'm also gonna tight line with this. And then for the inner corner, I think I am gonna go into the lightest shade in the palette here, which is called Friction. And I'm gonna use this just right on the inner portion of my eye. Pretty lightly, I just want a little bit of brightness there. Okay, so let's move on to blush, my favorite part. So Patrick Ta has one of my favorite blush formulas, especially his duos. He has a powder and a cream in one. And for holiday, he came out with this palette that was gorgeous with three new shades of his blush duos. Well, everybody went nuts for it. It sold out. It was limited edition. And I was wondering if he was going to make it permanent, but he actually decided to create each of those shades in singles if you wanted to just pick up one. So he just released those along with one brand new shade. This is called She's Blushing. I haven't even like swatched it or anything. So this is the new shade that has never been released before. So I know I love this formula, but I want to see how this color looks on the skin. Now I had gotten some some questions about comparing this to She So LA because they did look similar. When I'm looking at them here, She So LA is definitely more on the tan side. So here they are 
can paired next to each other. Of course, I'm going to swatch them for you, but this one definitely doesn't really have any of that like pink in there, whereas this one has sort of like a mauve undertone. Okay, so I just swatched them for you. This is She's So LA. You can see that this one definitely has more of that like terracotta, tan bronze shade. This is the new one, She's Blushing, so they are quite different. The new one actually translates a little more pink when you swatch it, but I'm assuming it's gonna be like a beautiful kind of burnt pink look. So just to compare, they definitely are different. So if you're new to the Patrick Ta blush formula, it's such a unique formula because you're actually meant to put the powder down first and then the cream, which is backwards from everything you're ever told. You start out with the powder, then you put the cream on top and it just brings your face this like gorgeous glow, but it's so easy to use. It layers beautifully. Of course, you could use it separate or just the powder or you could, you know, switch it up, but I'm going to start off with the powder side. Another thing I want to note is the powder blushes in this formula, so in the duos, is quite pigmented, so you don't want to, you know, go heavy. You really want to build this up and then take the cream on top. I know he originally came out with blushes that were in singles and they were not nearly as pigmented. You really had to build those. When he came out with the duos, it's completely different. This powder formula really packs a punch. Ooh, look at that. So it definitely has a glow to it, which is interesting because I don't know, some of his original uh, duos, the powder has no glow, like it's a matte. But I'm definitely seeing a really pretty glow. Ooh, so pretty. So this definitely does have a glow. I don't find that it's enhancing my texture. There's no like chunky glitter, but I would say this is a satin powder. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. So I am going to take my beauty blender into the blush and then I like to go on the back of my hand you can see the pigment there so this is definitely pigmented but I wouldn't say it's like you know the rare beauty or something that's really really intensely pigmented that you're going to you know mess it up Ooh, something about his creams look at how that just gave me a glow to the skin, but it's not heavy, it's not sticky, it's not patchy. It went over that powder effortlessly. He honestly has the best formula on the market. I am just in awe every time I use them. So I like to go heavy because YOLO. <laughs> That's just what I like. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So this is translating, I would say, like a pink terracotta. It's not baby doll pink or anything like that. It's giving me like that burnt flush. So I absolutely love that blush. I pretty much knew I would. I've loved every single one he's come out with. I just love the formula so much. I feel like it's just so unique because it doesn't feel heavy. It's not hard to use. You can use it over powder or under powder. You can do whatever you want and it's just so effortless. And it gives you this beautiful glow to your skin without enhancing your texture or your you know hair sticking to it, getting patchy. It's just beautiful. So I wanna go in next with a little bit of highlighter. I don't have a new one, so I'm gonna use my Dior Backstage. This is just, honestly, one of my favorites. All right, so let's finish this look off with lips. I thought I was gonna use this Patrick Ta gloss, but I think I'm gonna save it for the next video because I feel like these would look better. I don't know which one to use. I have this Natasha Denona I Need a Rose lipstick. I bought two different shades, and then I also have this Makeup by Mario lip cream, which I feel like probably would look good with this. So I'm not sure which way I wanna go. I wanna start off with lining my lips. This is a new product to me, and I picked this up a while ago, and I just missed reviewing it. This is the Lisa Eldridge uh, Enhance and Define Lip Pencil in the shade Decade. This looks a little bit dark, but I feel like the tone goes with what we have going on. So I'm gonna line my lips with this to start, and then we'll decide which lip color we wanna go for.
Okay, so I went ahead and filled in the corners of my lips. Because this is a very light shade, I'm gonna try out this Makeup by Mario Ultra Shade Cozy Lip Cream. I picked up Nude Suede. I feel like this would go best with what we have on right now, just because it's a cool tone, sort of pinky nude. It feels like a moussey texture, and it smells good, almost like, uh, I don't know, like pina coladas or something? Coconut? Okay, so that's a very light shade. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to blend this. Okay, so it feels super comfortable on the lips. It is definitely like a pinky cool tone. I feel like the uh, Lisa Eldridge liner that I used is pulling quite purple. I'm gonna try to apply maybe a little more in the center here. So I'm really liking the Mario formula. I'm not getting any weird line. It feels very comfortable. It's not like dry. I don't really love the lip combo with what we have going on. I think I am going to attempt to apply a little bit of this on top. This is the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lipstick. This is a new formula. I love her original. And this is in Daphne. I also picked up Peony, but I feel like I need a little bit of warmth on my lips just to kind of tie in the cheeks. It feels really creamy. I didn't realize how like purple tone that lip liner was. So the lipstick feels great, but I just think the lip liner we have on is kind of throwing everything off. I'm gonna do one last thing to try to save it. I don't wanna remove this just because then it's gonna be a nightmare trying to fix my makeup around. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this peachy pink gloss. This is the High Key Gloss from Kim She Chic. This is incredibly pigmented. I'm gonna wipe it off and then, yeah, you can see. I'm hoping that this will pull a little bit more peach into this. So I do think that helped. I prefer this look to the other shade, but I'll have to keep trying out all these lip products. But I like the formula on the Mario, and I also love the Natasha. I just think with what we have going on, we were mixing a lot of cool and warm tones. Okay, so I was gonna leave my makeup there, but I do think I wanna try out this Major Volume Plumping Gloss by Patrick Ta. Just because we're mixing warm and cool tones, I feel like why not? So this is supposed to be a plumping gloss. It has a really big doe foot that has sort of like a slant in it. And I picked up the shade Full Syringe, which looks red, but it's, uh pretty clear they all were. Definitely getting like a minty cinnamon sort of vibe. So in terms of the feel, it doesn't feel sticky to me at all. It's thicker, meaning that it's not gonna go all over, but I don't feel like a tack at all. It's very comfortable on the lips. And I like the cinnamon in it, meaning that it's not overly cinnamon. It's like a minty cooling cinnamon. Even as I'm talking, it doesn't hurt at all. It feels very much like, let's say, the Buxom glosses, just like a refreshing cooling feel because when I heard cinnamon initially, I was like, ooh, I don't really like that. I wanna smell this Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm Heat. Yeah, this has a similar sort of vibe if you tried these. I do think the Fenty actually is more intense than this one because all I'm really getting is almost like I just popped in a mint or something. It's very glossy. I don't know about, you know, making my lips bigger. I mean, Lord knows we don't need that. But the only thing I would say is I wish that these had a little bit more pigment just because looking at the swatches, they all just look very, very sheer. I feel like race car Teddy's out there, you know? He's just like doing laps and I'm like, could you be any more annoying, honest to God? All day, every day. Okay, I wanna swatch the Patrick Ta next to the Fenty Beauty to show you. So right here is the Patrick Ta, and then right here is the Fenty Beauty. So you can see they're similar. The Fenty still has a little bit more pigment, but I picked up this shade because I wanted something that had a little bit of color, and all the other shades really looked clear to me. 
but it feels really nice on the lips. It's not burning or anything like that. It honestly is very, very subtle. Feels like the Buxom glosses, like you just put, you know, a mint in your mouth or something. All right, guys, so here's my finished makeup look, and I have to say I really love how this turned out. I was nervous mixing all of the cool and warm tones, but I think it turned out beautifully. I wanna go over my thoughts on the products. I feel like everything was pretty nice today, but there's some standouts. So the ColourPop palette is gorgeous, very easy to use. You're going to get a lot of cool toned, more on the purple side, you're gonna get silvers, and then even these browns and these sort of tan shades, they have a cool vibe. Vibe to them. This is like the more purple lilac sister to the Stone Fox palette. Is that what it was called? Stone Cold Stone Fox? I don't know. Is Stone Cold Steve Austin? I don't know. My mind's going crazy. But this is going to give you more of like that mauve you know, cool tone vibe. Very, very pretty. I had no issues blending this out. And I love these style palettes from ColourPop because I feel like you have such a variety that you could really do a ton of different things. In terms of the YSL mascara, I felt like it was a drier formula that needed to be built up, but it wasn't messy and I feel like it did give me volume and length. Of course, I did apply huge lashes, but I want to keep trying this out because I do feel like it didn't get clumpy. It was very easy to use and I do tend to prefer these volumizing wands, so I'm interested to keep trying that. I also really enjoy this red for hydration cream. As I said, I did take this with me on vacation to Florida. I was there for five days. I used it every single day. This product has no fragrance in it, which I love. It's a very basic, mild, great for sensitive skin type of moisturizer. I don't feel that it's heavy or too much to wear under makeup. I don't feel that this would be good for those of you that have really dry skin and need like crazy hydration. This is more for combo or normal skin in my opinion, but if you're looking for something with no fragrance that's just very basic to give you some hydration under your makeup, I think you'd enjoy this. I'm still absolutely loving this Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. Cannot say enough good things about it. I'm so glad that I picked it up. I was gonna skip over it. This is such a unique product. It gives you this soft matte appearance to the skin. It blurs your pores. It also does some shine control. It doesn't make you dry, but I've noticed that it does help with my oiliness and my T-zone. Honestly, this is probably gonna become holy grail status for me. That's how much I love it. Now let's move on to the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. I do think the shade I got was too dark, so I'll probably go back and get something maybe like two shades down. It's one of those that reminds me of the LYS foundation that a lot of people loved in the sense of having that skincare benefits, very glowy if you don't set it, but this is a thinner formula and less texture enhancing. Just not as heavy as that one. It's really beautiful. It gives a medium coverage. I would say it's not gonna go over a medium and you don't wanna over apply. I've been wearing this now for maybe an hour and I can see a little bit of glow coming through but it's nothing that's enhancing my texture. It didn't go patchy when I set it which is something that can happen with really glowy, uh, hydrating foundations on me. I just think this is beautiful. I'm interested to see how it wears. I will leave a pinned comment. I'll be able to wear this for probably seven, eight hours today. So I'll leave a pinned comment down below, but first impression on this is really nice. On the other hand, the worst product I tried today was the Makeup Revolution Under Eye Line Fix. I just feel like it did something funky on this side of my face. It just lifted or did something weird, and I've used this concealer a few times and had no problem, so I know it's this. I'll keep trying it, uh, but I'm not impressed. I don't think it did anything other than mess up my concealer. I do really like this LYS concealer. Very, very thin, very hydrating, very skin-like. I don't agree that it's full coverage. I would say it's a medium coverage, but if you have dry under eyes, I think you would really enjoy this. Looks nice nice and smooth, just a beautiful formula. I'm sure you won't be shocked to know that I adore this new shade from Patrick Ta in the Blush Duos. It's more of like a pinky, sort of sunburnt look. I would say it's like a mix of She's Baked, but with more pink. It's not like She's So LA. This one has just much more of like that burnt, kind of pink flush to it. This formula just honestly can't be beat. I love it so much. I really want him to come out with more shades. Like I literally have every shade, but I'm like, I need more. If you find yourself on the fence wondering if you will enjoy this Patrick Ta blush duo, I cannot say enough good things about it. 
any of the shades that you think would work for you. I just love this formula so much. It just is perfection to me. So easy, no mess, no fuss, no patching. It goes over powder. You can use it without powder. You can mix it. I just can't say enough good things. He kills it with the blush game and every time I see a new shade I'm like a little kid like so excited for it. Still getting my thoughts on the Melt Cosmetics eyeliners. They are insanely pigmented, insanely creamy, but I don't know about longevity. I haven't worn them long enough so again I'll try to leave a pinned comment on that. The Lisa Eldridge lip liner, I like it. It's okay. It's a little more purple toned than I had thought and when I was purchasing these I felt like I couldn't find like a true brown. I'm noticing it's wearing off a little bit with that gloss I put on uh, but this feels a little bit silicone uh, based to me which is a little bit weird almost like a gel I feel like it's gonna hang on for a while on the perimeter but where I put that gloss is kind of making it move but overall I think it's okay it's nothing you know like revolutionary it's a little too purple tone for me the makeup by Mario I think I'm going to enjoy because this is such a comfortable formula this is for those of you that don't like that dry cracky feel but you don't want something transferring all over it has that whipped moussey feel which is some of my favorite formulas like the clay de peau I've talked about many times and the Natasha Denona this is such a gorgeous color I bought two shades but just because we applied that lip liner I feel like we couldn't really see them so I'll keep trying these out in future videos and I'm surprised to say that I really like this Patrick Ta gloss it's very much like the Fenty Beauty one that I really love I thought the cinnamon was going to be really overpowering but I don't find it to be that it's more of just a cooling sensation even now my lips just feel really cool like pepperminty but they're not burning at all I would say the Fenty Beauty actually is a little more painful if you will this is really really beautiful I like this color I just wish that he would have put a little more pigment into the other shades because I do feel like Really the only thing you're gonna get out of these is like high shine glossy finish unless you go with this shade which has a little bit of a tint. Okay, so that is everything for this trying new makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm loving the look that I came up with. So I will link all the products that I used today down below in my description box if you wanna shop through those links. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below um, on everything that I used today. What do you think of this look? What do you think of all the products I demoed? I will try to leave a pinned comment regarding the Melt Liner and the Kosas Foundation as well. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.